Hello everyone and welcome back to Void Space Alpha. My name is Ollie, and today we are continuing with our playthrough of Rome 2 Total War as the Romans, a uh, Julia faction, I believe, on hard difficulty. We pick up today as the Numidians land on one of our coastal cities, sorry, towns of Isle, and we have just our garrison, our fleet garrison and our garrison army to defend against uh, what should be quite easy infantry, actually, although we have got some plebeians, but um, all in all... The, the ranged component may be our undoing. So our mission today to begin with is to start by um, by fighting this battle on the battle map and our objective is to cause as much casualties as humanly possible even if victory is not within our grasp just to weaken the Numidians and stop them from popping up as a faction once more. Now while that's loading in I just want to say a massive massive thank you to all the people that have subscribed to the channel over the last what's it been a week and a half two weeks we are now over 16,000 subscribers and i know that rome 2 total war is one of the more popular series that you are enjoying so thank you so much i appreciate that massively please do continue to leave your comments down below like share do all that great stuff because it does wonders for the algorithm luckily the attacking force is quite far away so they're going to be quite tired by the time they get over here i'm thinking this is going to be the obvious area to defend we have got a legionary cohort, a Evacati cohort, and some Viglites. I was about to call them Riorii there. But let's... Um, that's quite a wide gap to defend, but then again, I think this is even wider. No, it's not as wide. Okay, so we'll defend here. We'll put our Viglites, or Viglites in there, and our levies behind, like so. Plebeians are like the, the last call of Rome. And our ships, our ships we will just dump right here, just so that we can, uh, we'll get the two big ones disembarking first, and then the lighter one afterwards. We've got some velites and some levies. Um, so let's dump those down and get them disembarking. And do you know what, whilst we're doing that, I think it might be prudent just to increase the speed a little bit. There we are. And yeah, it looks like these guys have all disembarked, which is fantastic. We are going to bring them over here and provide some sort of assistance against this area, which they seem to be hitting us from both sides now. So this is the first time an enemy AI on hard difficulty has done a two-pronged attack against us, which is just fascinating. So our levies are going to throw their spears, that is fine. Our general is under attack. Yeah, that's no surprise to me whatsoever. Uh, we've got our ranged units running in. But our plebs are potentially going to take the brunt of the damage from this Numidian cavalry, which is eager here. Yeah, we've already lost two. Let's see if we can get our Velites and levies over there. Okay, we're getting some mercenary Numidian cavalry uh, causing a rout. Yeah, they're fully broken. That is brilliant. We'll continue to whittle down these guys here, mercenary Numidians. Um, plebs are probably not going to continue holding. Now, I might just try and retreat those further away just to try and keep them in the fight whilst these Velites and levies turn up to assist yet two units of Numidian cavalry down we do have javelin men and spearmen coming around the side here so it might be one of those situations where it's just not going to be possible to hold because we're going to get two pronged but we can certainly do our best to inflict as many casualties as humanly possible now these Numidian cavalry should stop being a problem shortly once these missile units are at full throw. And yeah, I think these plebs are going to try and chase them down. We're just going to cause them to move, but we'll just pull our plebs back because actually we don't want them to move. We want them to stay still so we can hit them with our javelin men. Like so. This should be very holdable. We've got two legionary cohorts and one Riorii. Not Riorii, big uh, But this is going to be less so. Now, yeah, that Numidian cavalry is wavering. It's got five units left, four units left. This is kind of the area that we don't really care too much about in the sense of it's just going to be what it's going to be. If these guys decide to flank round, you know, we're extra boned. 
But we've got our spear units here now. I'm going to put them into skirmish. Let's see if we can inflict some casualties. They are Numidian Javelin men, so I'm expecting great things from them. They are probably going to inflict quite a decent amount of casualties upon us. Uh, but that said, if we can get a few volleys off before them, then even better. Right, yeah, spear units breaking already, Numidian spearmen. Uh, this spear unit's confident moving in? I wouldn't be so if my unit number was going down that quickly. The one spear unit or two spear units in the rear are going to cause us some serious problems. Now, if I can get my general on there, general. Right, okay, and we've got some spearmen coming in this way. Let me see if I can at least bring these guys back. They are going to end up making contact over there. Come on, pull back. Pull back, Velites. Might even need to get the plebs in. Just as a meat shield. Right, let's get a legionary cohort in as well. We might be able to hold this with just our general. Right, and just focus fire on these guys. Right, we've got our three missile units over here. Let's see if we can hit them. I'm not expecting miracles from the plebs. They were there just as a delay tactic. General, yeah, just you're doing whatever you can. That's fine. These guys are moving in, I'm guessing, because they're out of missiles. So I'll just continue to shoot the ones that have missiles. And I might be able to whittle down these guys, actually. I know it's, we're firing into combat there. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Right, who's used all their ammunition? These two levies? Yeah, they have. Okay, well then you may as well become melee infantry. Belites and levies that have ammunition left, get involved in throwing your spears at these mercenary Numidian javelin men. Yeah, the plebs are starting to wave and rout. That's to be expected. Our general's doing a sterling job at holding the line there, and they are actually catching the javelin men in open combat, so we'll do that. Another javelin men unit there, dying. Now, we do need to keep our general alive. Can't believe we've seen off the cavalry. That is epic, to be completely honest with you. What we want to do is break their general. Oh, as if, as if by magic. Enemy general has been killed. Brilliant. Right, okay, yeah, now everybody can head over into this direction. They are going to break and run and flee. And what a sterling, sterling defense. A close victory, but a victory nonetheless. We deployed 1,300 men, including, what, 240 plebs. I think they're 120 a unit. And they deployed 1,100, almost 1,200 troops. And we saw them off. That is how Romans behave. I am completely in awe of their ability. It's almost a shame that there wasn't a Legion station there to gain that experience. That was fantastic. Uh, we will now continue with our conquest in Spain. And last episode, I recruited a few agents because somebody pointed out to me really obviously, but and I, and I felt really dumb for it, that we haven't actually used agents in, in this series at all. Um, so yeah, we recruited a spy, we recruited a, a champion, and we recruited a diplomat or a dignitary. I can't remember what the official terminology is for those. Now, I'm going to send the spy over to here. Uh, or am I? What, what actions can they carry out here? Settlement sabotage. He's got a 45% chance of success. Let's try that. Sabotage failed, but he didn't die. That's the crucial thing. Champion. Now, I know they can join armies. We should have three legions up here, no? Where's our third? Oh, yeah, our third is stationed down here in Migdol. Just keeping eyes on the public order and stopping this Numidian fleet from coming in until they've got a garrison. So it's going to be another few turns until that is required. This town here also needs a garrison because I'm worried about it just getting retaken. So we will change this to a trading post and we'll probably get rid of those military buildings to be completely honest with you. Right, what does the champion do? Champion can do military training or, in terms of a settlement, he can do settlement sabotage. He's only got a 40% chance of success. So let's get him to do some training with these guys here. And by these guys, I obviously mean the 16th Legion. Um, that is going particularly well. 
Um, yeah, he is attached to that army. And the dignitary. Let's send the dignitary in. We can sabotage a settlement. What, what if I attack a... We can sabotage an army. And yeah, it's, a, it's about... It looks like it's on a unit per unit basis. Whereas character subversion... Nah, it's not going to work. Let's try and sabotage that settlement again. It's going to cost us 418. That's okay. It's worth the shot. Uh, he got himself wounded. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't need to worry about this too much. Let's have a look at what's going on in the Empire at the moment. So, naturally, all the red areas are ours. That's everything that we control. And what I want to do at the moment is link up the Spanish lands or, or carry out a Spanish conquest of some description. We have a legion building up in Tolosa. They were attacked last episode. There is now <clears throat> the Thunderbolts of Ryu were repulsed, and we are now going to be able to run them down with this legion here, which comprises almost exclusively, or is it exclusively? Yeah, no, almost exclusively, of cavalry. Earning themselves an upgrade in the process, we will give them the cunning boost so we can get some movement speed, the 2% morale. That seems very fitting. Let's have 5% um, armor for all units and 3% for battles in foreign territory. They are going to be in foreign territory soon, so that is good. Um, I don't really want to move them to the border until they're slightly more recruited up, so I'm going to get a few more legionary cohorts, and that'll just be whatever I can get. We'll get some auxiliary infantry as well. We've got this holding legion, which is moving down. This is Legion 9, and yeah, we're just basically converging a lot of our military might on, um, on the Spanish holdings. Now, we did take the Balearic Islands last episode, and I think uh, we have got 21 public order in Ibisim. How much of that is from military presence? 19 of that is from military presence at the moment, and we haven't actually converted any of the, of the buildings or towns or anything like that. So I think if we can bring our fleet in over here to uh, Ars, we can potentially just auto-resolve this fight land our fleet here, destroy the garrison, and capture a second town and occupy it. So the fleet is occupying that town, and hopefully the Legion will do too. In fact, we could probably give them a fast move order and actually have them occupying that town, which makes that town almost impervious to attack. Now, that might have given us a little bit more extra money for us to recruit yet another Legionary cohort, and that auxiliary infantry. So I don't think that is a bad turn at all. Did these guys get any upgrades during that battle? Uh, they did not, so that is fine. Let's hit the end turn button and see, yeah, the Macedonians are going to chase down and finish off the remaining Numidians on land. There is still a fleet that has one unit in it that requires finishing off at sea, and that is actually in the Atlantic. There it is there. Um, but yeah, I'm not holding out much hope for that. As soon as we've got even the meagerest of garrisons in the Numidian lands, we will be moving our garrisoned legions from there to support in the siege of Spanish territory, which is going to be a huge win for our empire. Right, so they are coming to meet me in battle. It says that it's a pretty even deployment, although they have huge numbers advantage, not quality advantage, but numbers advantage. I do not have the cavalry that I would like to have to support this fight. And they do have some mercenary Iberian cavalry. So I'm going to play a little bit cautiously, 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 and fall back ever so slightly. The true Titani are now out of their town. They can move another army in. Okay, that was probably a terrible call by me, because now it's two fully stacked armies. But I'm going to fight this battle on the battle map. I almost pressed the auto resolve button there. What a catastrophe that would be. Um, and for something that says that it's going to be this difficult to win, I'm thinking we're just going to try and play super defensive and see if we can inflict, again, as much casualties as humanly possible. That is my strategy. I don't have any information on where the enemy reinforcements are coming from. I just have a load of legionary cohorts and a load of Velites with a Legatus, I'm guessing. Uh, or actually a general. Uh, Gnaeus Pavo. Or Gnaeus Pavo. Um, right, okay, let's go for... I mean, this is what you do if you, if you had a difficult battle in Rome 1, right? You just create a big square. Uh, so let's try... Let's try that. Uh, one, two, three. 
Come on, buddy. Let's go like so. Um, and you know what? I think I might have made this square a bit too big. I think I can make it a lot shorter, actually. I could just go... Yeah, get the, get the number, the ranks deep is what you want. Uh, yeah, let's go like that. Let's go like that. And let's go like that. I know this is absolute cheese central. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be really honest with you. That, that's not beneath me. That is 100% not beneath me. Let's get Velites pointing in every direction. And we'll put general. our general in the middle. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, God, that was such a such a needed sneeze. Um, right, yeah, that is me. Cheese Lord Maximus. Let's see. Can I move this? Oh, God, how do I... Oh, I just absolutely decimated my formation just by holding down the alt key and seeing if I can move it. The answer is I cannot. So let's just pause and get everyone back into position. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And then let's do the wrong way. Let's do that. Yep. Yeah. And we had two Velites facing that way. We had two Velites facing that way. Velites facing that way. It's actually a lot more difficult to do um, when key units are scattered all over the screen. And yeah, general in the middle. Right, let's try that again. Reinforcements approaching. It looks like there's reinforcements coming in, which is fully, fully expected. We've got one legion's worth of troops. We need to inflict as much damage as possible. They, these guys can do attacking to studios. They cannot do um, defensive to studios, which is a shame. I have got the inspire ability on my general, um, which is something. Looks like this mercenary Iberian cavalry is going to come and join the main brunt of the attack. And, yeah, you know, hopefully we inflict some casualties. That is the hope. So, yeah, this, these two forces are going to join up, which is going to be problematic for us. I'm thinking the Belites might actually be better in two concentric lines. If they are going to attack from the front, like say, so, might as well get four of them in the front. We're pretty heavily defended in the front. In fact, I might just bring another cohort up there and just have a thinner line at the back. In fact, saying that, I might just throw another cohort up there and have an even thinner line at the back. There we go. Just in case they decide to envelop. We've got flaming shot on, which should give a morale penalty to anyone getting into combat with us. So that, what we're hoping for, really, is a is a break in morale and some mass routes would be very useful. It looks like these units are going to make contact but also attempt to flank, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, but these guys got fire at will on, they have, so they should be throwing their peelers as soon as they can. I'm not seeing many peeler throws going in though, which is a shame. Could use my general to go and hit some of their skirmishing units, but that is... Sorry about that very brief interruption, but yeah, look, where were we? We were just taking the brunt of their attack on. So, yeah, our Velites are firing. There's not a lot more that we can do other than just weather the storm, I think. I'm going to keep that one cohort at the back just to, to kind of see what's happening. But other than that, yeah, it was just a case of... Getting down into the trenches and seeing what's going on. Let's keep looking. Yeah, these Spaniards do not know what they're in for, do they? Yeah, okay. It looks like they're hitting a lot of our flanks quite hard. Our cohorts are taking a bit of flak. Okay, right. Where's going to be... This is the best place now for me to break out. So let's bring a legionary cohort round. Let's bring our general out. General can hit this side on the skirmishing troops. They have a general over here, which is a Scutiari cavalry. General. Right, general. Get yourself over there into those Balearic slingers. Legionary you legionaries, get in there. Get in there. Okay, good couple of peeler throws. We can start collapsing in on that. You guys, get over there. You guys, get over there. We may be able to inflict some serious casualties. It's entirely, entirely possible. 
Uh, the Velites, let's get them reformed. Just so they can start cracking on. Yeah, our general is probably going to take down those Balearic Slingers. And we are starting to envelop. Enemy general, is dead. Enemy general has been killed. That is fantastic news. They still have another general up. Yeah. They're still taking a lot of fire damage, which is fine. Let's actually switch that out to normal. We have a cohort here that is taking damage. Oh, there is a sword unit here. Veteran shield warriors. Let's move our general away. Let's get him back round. Yeah, their Scutiari cavalry are coming in. Keep running, General. Keep running, General. We don't want to lose a fight to some swordsmen. Yeah, okay. So far, we are inflicting casualties, but it's not looking great. Let's continue to get round and harass. See if we can hit these Balearic Slingers over here. That should give us more than enough time to get away. There is a unit routing here. Veteran Shield Warriors. They're wavering. Let's get this cohort in. Let's get this cohort in. This cohort. Get yourself stuck in. Where's our general? Yeah, he is causing damage to these Balearic Slingers. And whilst he's doing that, they are not firing, which is even better. These veteran shield warriors are going to cause a problem. All 26 of them are going to make it to the line. 25... Kill those. Velatage, you're going to have to do some heavy lifting. I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like their general has charged our general. Break our general off. Right, let's see if we can get them to chase us round. Right, okay, these Velatage did win. Oh, are they still fighting? They are still fighting in here. Right, can I... Yeah, I could charge these shield warriors. One of our units is wavering. Can I inspire them? I know there's only 16 of you left. But if I can get you to hold just a little bit longer, we might be able to inflict a few more casualties. Right, yeah, they're going to break. They're going to break. We can potentially push a couple of legionary cohorts in there. Let's bring our missiles back. Right, that unit is fleeing, which is fantastic. But yeah, some of our men are legging it as well, which is not ideal. Get in there. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. We are having some fleeing units. It's not anything they've done wrong. It's just because they're getting absolutely battered. More legionary cohorts going in. Push in. Mercenary Iberian Cavalry are taking a hounding. Uh, I think that's a combination of a hammering and a pounding. Our Velites are causing problems. There's Mercenary Iberian Swordsmen over here. Can I hit them with everything we've got ranged-wise? One of our units has used all its ammunition. Yeah. Yeah, it's not looking great. Mercenary Iberian Swordsmen are going to close in there. The side of one of our cohorts. They are taking serious casualties, though, from, from our missile units. These guys are going to get destroyed, so let's just send the Velites that have used their ammunition in. Yeah, it's not looking great for a Roman victory here, but we can make it a Roman bleed. Let's move the general up. Missile infantry still firing in. Can we cause these guys to rout? Potentially we can. Let's have a look at the battlefield. It is an absolute cluster. We do have a unit over here, though. We can get these Scutiari cavalry killed. That would be a huge benefit. Yeah, our Velites are wavering. That is not a surprise. 
Let's hit these spearmen. I mean, sword does beat spear, so that is a benefit. Enemy generals down to 26 men. There is every chance we can hit this general and cause a big problem for morale. Now they're going to run away. Do not run through the lines, Velites. Yeah, we're losing more cohesion. Yeah, that's not gone well. Let's get this cohort, or what's remaining of it, over to here. They are going to get a peeler throw off. We'll get them in. General. General stood right next to these units and they're breaking the and fleeing. Okay, dead. the enemy general is dead, so we've killed the enemy general. That is a bonus. Let's collapse these cohorts left and right. And oh, this is going to be very tight, but we are inflicting a decent amount of casualties. We're also taking a completely unrecoverable amount of casualties and I think that's it our general has fled so all of our soldiers are now going to run yeah not gone particularly well that battle but uh, yeah a very costly enemy victory we killed 2400 of the 2000 sorry the 4200 that they deployed so we killed over half with that legion um, they are probably going to kill our army in its entirety yeah so that is another legion down, unfortunately, but a lot of their forces are now concentrated in the south, and it did buy us some time in Gardia or Gadira um, to strengthen what little forces that we have and build up a garrison, potentially. Right, we have a new commander required. We cannot get House Julia, so I think we will just continue with whoever is the best fit. I'm going to go for you. Uh, with the need for cavalry, yeah, let's get cavalry horsemen rallied. Agent killed as army falls. Okay, so that's our champion down. A lot of pop-ups here. Um, right, so we actually have an area here that we probably can't hold on to, but we do have the ability to convert this town. Uh, in fact, it's probably not worth doing at the moment because of that enemy fleet. We've got 17 units, they've got 15. We've taken a bit of a battering, though. We cannot hire any available mercenaries. But I can bring both of these forces down to the border, which is what I want to do. And start threatening the Spanish holdings from the north. Now, I can recruit as well. So what I want to do is grab, I mean, probably some missile units for this area. Auxiliary... Celtic skirmishers. Yeah, they've got much better armor for the extra money. Um, not really a bit about the same on upkeep as well. So we get three in there, and now we have the same situation here. We get three in there. I don't mind using auxiliary units if they are better than what we currently have. And there is a blazing fury of Nito or Neto in southern Spain here, an army. Now, I am going to recruit, sorry, build two more recruitment structures, and we will continue to guard Guardia. Now, Migdal is three turns away from a garrison of any description. So what I think I'm going to do is move that up there, that legion that is. We'll reinstate the legacy of the 16th here, and we'll just put them there. This guy has got some bonuses that we can distribute there. I think actually, if we if we move you out and have you fortify, then we can also move you in because you're on a forced march. You're on 19 troops. You can hire mercenaries, but you can't recruit. These are on 18 troops. Again, they can hire, they can recruit troops, but there's no recruitment buildings here. So that makes it problematic. So I think at the moment, my best bet is to move the fleet back over to here, provide a defense for Ibersim against this uh, naval landing force here. There is an army, sorry, nay, a legion in Ars, which is yeah, probably overdue 
a garrison. So we'll get that doing and we'll get a market town here as well, just to get the garrison. In fact, let's change this to a cohort barracks. And what we've got 2,000 left. Let's change this to... Uh, what's it going to give me the best garrison? Just two raiding... Um, Herm Hermoyla. Whereas this one gives me a missile trireme as well. Let's go for that. Um, okay, so look, that is the end of this turn, but also the end of this episode. A couple of valiant defences from the Roman perspective. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got this far in the video, popping up on your screen now will be some other videos that I hope you check out. So please do that. And uh, yeah, in the description to this video, and every video I upload for that matter, is a link to a Discord server. I'd love to see more Rome 2 Total War players on there, sharing their battles, sharing their conquests, sharing their tips and hints and all that kind of great stuff. So please do that as well. I will see you in the next episode.